ISIS is losing cash and fast. At its peak, the Islamic State controlled large stretches of northern Syria and Iraq. That's land the group loots, taxes, and takes oil from. And that made it one of the richest terror organizations around. But ISIS has lost a lot of ground, and it's very close to losing the Iraqi city of Mosul now. As this happens, Peter Newman says, ISIS is losing money as well. Newman is the director of the International Center for the Study of Radicalization and Political Violence. He joins us now. Welcome to the program. Hello. So in your report, you also uh, write about ISIS selling the region's antiquities, also using kidnapping ransom uh, as a source of revenue. But how rich are they, I mean, compared to al-Qaeda or some other kind of terror group? So we estimated that at the peak of their success, when they declared their caliphate, they had income or revenues of up to $2 billion. The important point, though, is, number one, it has dramatically declined. Last year, they only took in a maximum of $1 billion. That's 50% less. And the second point is, of course, that ISIS is not a conventional terrorist organization. And compared to conventional terrorist organizations, ISIS had territory. It had territory. It had a population that generated a lot of income. But they also, of course, had a lot more expenses. They had to fix roads. They had to pay for teachers and all the other things that, quote unquote, states do. With these uh, uh, campaigns against ISIS in Syria and in Iraq, how much territory have they lost overall? And what has that meant for their financing? Well, that's the key point, really. Um, ISIS has lost territory. And because almost all of their money comes from within the territory, that explains the dramatic decline in their income. Because, in fact, the international campaign led by the United States over the past three years against Islamic State has actually been fairly successful. On the Iraqi side, ISIS has lost 60 percent of the territory they used to have in 2014. And even on the Syrian side, where it's a lot more complicated to fight, ISIS has lost 30% of the territory they used to have. And that means fewer businesses and people to tax, fewer oil fields that can be extracted, and fewer places that can be looted. So how do they adapt? I mean, how do they make up the difference in that loss of funds? So that's the big question, because we haven't seen them producing new significant sources of revenue. And our guess would be that they are actually returning to what their predecessor organization used to do in the late 2000s. They are going underground. They are becoming essentially a criminal network again that is involved in smuggling and extortion that is involved in common criminality. That's how they survived when suddenly the opportunity opened up to actually capture territory. I think that's what they will go back to. Looking forward, uh, we know ISIS has inspired a lot of fear in Western countries because of terror attacks that they inspired or helped direct abroad. But these attacks don't always take a lot of resources. So what does it mean for their activities overseas? That's right. This will not have the dramatic decline of finances, will not have an immediate effect on terrorist operations abroad. We know that in Europe, for example, terrorists are being told to self-finance their attacks, even the Paris attacks, which were fairly complex in November 2015, according to the French government, they cost less than 20,000 euros. And that money was raised through petty criminality. People were taking out fake loans. They were selling consumer goods. They were even dealing with drugs. So this is quite independent of ISIS, the central organization as it exists in its core territory in Syria and Iraq. So in the short term, I don't think it will have any effect. And if anything, It may mean actually more effort to carry out terrorist operations abroad. Peter Newman is the director of the International Center for the Study of Radicalization and Political Violence. That's at King's College in London. Thank you for speaking with All Things Considered. Thank you.